بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد ايها الاحباب continuing on in our study of sharh sunnah by imam babahari rahimahu allah ta'ala we reached the ninth point which is an incredibly important point and we'll briefly go over it in this sitting and maybe we'll come back to it because there are also some, some other fawaid from some of the other ulama but we'll stick with some of the benefits that Sheikh Rabi uh, bin Hadi al-Madkhali hafadhallahu ta'ala that he mentioned قال المؤلف رحمه الله تعالى وعلم أن الخروج عن طريقي على, على وجهين Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala ayya lahbab and may Allah bless us and bless you and have mercy upon you and mercy upon us and mercy upon you and love us and love you. Ameen. He said rahimahullah ta'ala he said and know that leaving the path has two different ways or there are two different ways that people leave the path. And ayya lahbab I usually don't like to talk about specific individuals but I feel it's incredibly relevant and it has only just come to my knowledge some of the latest I don't know how recent this is but recently I saw and received some information about Yasser Qadi Dr. Yasser Qadi may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide him who has clearly fits under this it's very relevant to what we're studying and this shows us the importance of coming back to the creed and the manhaj of the salaf of this ummah that you should always make revision no matter how much knowledge you think you have how much knowledge the people make you think you have whatever your situation is come back to the usul of deen come back to the usul of the manhaj of the salaf of this ummah and may Allah bless us with that may Allah bless us all with ikhlas with thabat ameen ya rabbil alameen Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala said amma ahaduhuma فالرجل قد زل عن طريق وهو لا يريد إلى الخير فلا يقتدى بزله بزلله فإنه هالك والرجل عاند الحق وخالف من كان قبله من المتقين فهو الضال مضل شيطان مريد في هذه الأمة حقيق على من عرفه أن أن يحذر الناس منه ويبين لهم قصته لا لا إلا يقع في بدعته أحد فيهلك. إمام بابا هاري said رحمه الله تعالى very very profound and shows us that the salaf dealt with these issues. He said know that leaving the correct path occurs in two ways. Firstly, that a man strays from the correct path, intending nothing but good. So his error is not to be followed, since it leads to destruction. He's given us those kawa'id. How does Ahl Sunnah deal with people with their mistakes? Secondly, a man who deliberately opposes the truth and acts contrary to the pious ones who came before him, he is astray, leading others astray. A rebellious devil within the Ummah. It is a duty upon those who know of him to warn the people against him and to explain his condition to them so that no one falls into his innovation and is destroyed. Subhanallah. It is as if, it is as if Imam Babahari, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, who wrote this, who died in 329 Hijriya, 1100 years ago, as is if in this second Ibarah. He's talking about people like Yasser Qadi. May Allah guide us in him. Because you cannot, for those people who cling to defend this man, he clearly states in his opposition in many, many aspects with regards to minhaj, methodology, which is a part of our religion. It is the madhab of the salaf that he contradicts that. What did he do many years ago? that yukhalif hadha that goes against what Imam Barbahari was saying how did he differ with the pious predecessors first he signed a pact he said America doesn't need the, basically in essence what they said America doesn't need this fitna of course we don't need fitna of speaking against groups 
and this and this and this and speaking against others. So I'm going to sign a pact with the Shia. I'm going to sign a pact with the Sufis. I'm going to sign a pact with the Ashadis. And we're going to come together, which is the methodology of Khan and Muslimin, by the way, Ayal Ahbab. So we have knowledge of this. We're going to sign this treaties so that we know, uh, so that we can work together to deal with the common good in America. Now this sounds good with regards to our desires. It sounds good. Nobody likes to fight and argue, especially about creed and theology. Nobody likes to have enmity and, 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 and issues with their Muslim brothers and sisters. No, this is not good. However, how can you come together with people who oppose the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ahlul Bid'ah? Doesn't this go against the method of the Salaf? Isn't this what Imam Babahari was saying? What did he say? So anyone, قَالَ Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala Secondly, a man who deliberately opposes the truth and acts contrary to the pious ones who came before him contradicting the Salaf nowhere and I challenge Yasser Qadi, Dr. Qadi I challenge uh, any of those who follow him or anyone to bring us some athar of the Salaf where they were compromising with the Jahmiya. And I'm not saying that these individuals that he's, he's with, some of them may have bid'a mukaffara, but most of them probably have bid'a ghayr mukaffara. The point is, where from the madhab of the Salaf is it that you t you're to sign these kind of contracts and to have this kind of ta'awin thinking that you believe that this is the maslaha? You believe from your limited knowledge, Mr. Qadi, wa ghayr of Mr. Qadi. You believe from your limited knowledge that this is maslaha for America. But how can it be maslaha for America when you have people in America who don't know, who can't distinguish between Shia and Sunni, and they become into Islam or they believe they enter the fold of Islam at the hands of a Rafida, praying three times a day possibly, tapping their legs at the end of their prayer, saying Khan, 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 talking about Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, that he deceived, uh, uh, deceived, uh, and, and, and cheated the message and gave it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instead of, uh, instead of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. What kind of, how can we have, how can we cooperate with this? How can we cooperate with people who curse our mothers, curse the ummahat al mu'mineen? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, accuse her of adultery. They hold on to this as a creed. I've seen their discussions where they discuss and they use Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and homosexuality. I've seen it with my eyes. I'm not relating anything I, I've seen. I've seen it in the Shia discussion forums. They make takfir of most of the Sahaba. Illa qalil. They curse. This is a part of the religion. The Khawarij. The original Khawarij. What do they do? They curse the Sahaba. They make takfir of the Sahaba as well. How is it you can cooperate and say we shouldn't, let's not ruffle the feathers Let's work together. Let's work out, uh, you know, let's work for a common goal. There isn't. The goal, the aslan of the goal is tawheed, is the call to Allah. Well, and call to the sabila mu'mineen. It's the call to tawheed. It's the call to the oneness of Allah, azawajal. But if you have some people who make ta'wil of the ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his sifat, how is it you can ta'awun with them? How? That's like me as an African-American saying, me and the Ku Klux Klan, we have a commonality here, let's work together. No, the usul of their foundation of their belief is that I am less than human. And the usul of my belief is I can't work with people like that and have any kind of peaceful way of dealing with them. This is the same likewise with our creed, even more so. Why? Because this is a lost deen. It's not for me to decide. It's not my desires. It's not because I like this guy. He's an Ashidi and I really like him and he's kind. And he's nice. We drink tea. It's not for my desires to make the judgment. But it's going back to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Faham of the Salaf of this Ummah. This is what we see in these books. So before we even get into the explanation, I wanted to, to mention that, that point. So Imam Babahari, and then he said, he said, so anyone who claims that there remain, uh, he said, 
Rahimahullah ta'ala. And secondly, a man who deliberately opposes the truth acts contrary to the pious ones who came before him. He is astray, leading others astray, a rebellious devil within the ummah. It is upon those who know of him to warn the people against him and to explain his condition to them so that no one falls into his innovation and is destroyed. And this is why from Bab and Nasiha, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Ad-Din al Nasiha, qala li man, qala li Allah. قال لله ولكتابه ولرسوله ولأئمة المسلمين وعامتهم كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said the Deen and the Sihha. He said the religion is sincere advice. And they said لمن يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال he said to Allah to his book to his messenger to the leaders of the Muslims and the general Muslims. So as a part of sincere advice, we must warn against deviation from the creed and methodology of Ahl Sunnah. And when we hear people also, the recent thing that made me even think of speaking about Yasser Qadi was the fact that this new uh, thing in which his direct speech of what he's also saying, it just shows how a man begins, to, how bid'ah becomes small or begins small and it just grows. And a person begins to deviate, and a lot of times, unless Allah, unless Allah has mercy upon them, they just go further and further away. And this is the case, la shak, I believe, in my heart, firmly, from what I see with my eyes, what I hear with my ears, that this man, the Yasir Qadi, has done. He's gotten far. He's gotten far. And so there's no way we can advise someone to listen to him. I don't care how, what is PhD? Mashallah, is PhD from, a, from Yale, one of the most prestigious universities in the world. As far as secular studies, and it has a lot of research. It's a great academic institution. Ivy League school. Great netma to study there for those purposes. But that's not going to, to, to help you. Uh, you know, it's not going to bring you closer to Allah. That doesn't, that's not a shahid on your ilm and, and your practice and your methodology and your aqidah. No, that doesn't, that's not sufficient. Graduating and studying with many scholars or some scholars, even that, that's not sufficient if you don't practice. And what I see is that this man not just has made mistakes. Yukhalif al-minhaj. Yukhalif al-sunnah. Bi kathir. And he goes against those principles. It's like he just threw them away. I live in America now. Now I have a, a, a big wide audience. I'm accepted around the world. This is great. That's beautiful. Allah gave you that tawfiq. But why not use it to spread the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The methodology of the salaf of this ummah. Why go against what those people before you did? They didn't have cooperation. And yes, bid'ah has different levels. But that's no excuse. For, for what's taken place here. That doesn't mean compromise the principles of Ahl Sunnah. Throw away the principles of Ahl Sunnah. No. But in fact, you should adhere even more. And perhaps those people will be guided to the Sunnah. You were trained by scholars. You graduated from Jamal Islamiyah. Did a master's. This is also a fantastic accomplishment. It shows that the man is studious. But where did the studiousness lead him? So again, the Ibra, the main point, Ya Ayul is not that a person gains titles or even what they accomplish. They could even some people they sit with the kibar, major ulama, but they went astray. That tawfiq is from Allah. The tawfiq is from Allah, but the Ibra is adhering to those principles. It's going back to those usul. This is the reason we're studying this book, to come back. So as Imam Baba Hari said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, that a person, that a man falls into two type categories. There's one with regards to mistakes. There's one, he's from Ahl Sunnah. He has ijtihad in some issues or an issue, and he, he makes a mistake. He makes a mistake in Aqidah, in Minhaj, yes. As many great imams did. And Shaykh al-Islam speaks extensively about this. But his usul, his foundation is the sunnah. And it wasn't based on his desires. Then there's the other man 
who makes a mistake but his usul is not from Ahl Sunnah. He goes against the methodology and the method of Ahl Sunnah in many things. That's not where he goes back to. He goes back to being an Ashari, a Diobandi, a Naqshbandi, a Brailui, uh, many of the Sufi tariqas. Uh, he go goes back to being a Jamaat al Ahbash. He goes back to being uh, Ashari. He goes back to being, you know, Qadiani or any, any of those things, which their usul is, is, is a, in a contradiction to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to the Madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. This person makes a mistake, then they should be warned against and their mistake. Whereas the one from Ahl Sunni, you maintain his status that yes, he's still our brother, he's made a mistake, as I will make a mistake, as you will make a mistake, but he made a mistake in this issue, but he's still from Ahl Sunnah, and we still give him, uh, maintain his honor and his prestige. But the Mubtadi'ah, the one who goes against Ahl Sunnah in their usul and then makes a mistake. La karama lahu. There's no, uh, you know, necessarily maintaining his status or anything. But however, you must be just. This is the final point I want to mention. You must be just. You cannot be excessive. Because you don't know. Allah may guide him and you may be misguided later. So never hate someone. Ex never be excessive. And I learned this is a beautiful thing. We asked Sheikh, uh, Sheikhana, Sheikh Abdullah uh, uh, Al Mar'i Al Adani in Hadramaut. And we asked the Sheikh about an issue relating to Allah Wal Bara. So some of the students, they said that you, uh, you know, the loving and the hating, khalas, you dislike this person. And, you know, they, they went to that extreme. But I knew this was incorrect. So I said, no, that's not. And I said, let's take it to the Sheikh. And the Sheikh then clarified it and said, no, exactly as was mentioned, that you love a person with, as far as loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their, to the extent of their obedience to Allah. And you dislike them to the extent of their disobedience to Allah. So a mubtadi'a, one who has been a mukaffara, that, that takes them out of the fold of Islam, you have an extreme, you dislike them more than the one who doesn't have bid'ah mukaffara. And then they have different levels. Possibly one who has, he's, he has some doubtful issues with regards to Jamaat at tabliq He goes with Jamaat at tabliq But in general, his usul is mostly that of Ahl Sunnah. He's correct in Aqidah. You have a different respect with him, for him, than you do the one who's a dai, who's a leader of them, who's, you know, has maybe a Sufi creed or what have you. So everyone, it's in accordance you know, they, they, you have different, different aspects and different levels of your love and different levels of your disliking according to their innovation. And by, not, by having been just as Allah commands us to and as the Prophet ﷺ commanded us to and as is the men of the salaf of this ummah, we won't go to the extreme of disliking someone to so, such an extent that we speak about his, we, uh, speak about his honor, we speak about his family, we, you know, speak about things that are not relevant to the issue at hand, but rather you should speak about their, their, uh, their, their, their mistakes and warn the people for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with ikhlas, with thabat. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and ushirika bika wa ana a'lamu astaghfiruhu li min a'lamu wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.